As the storm of the Senate scandal has enshrouded Ottawa, the Prime Minister has faced daily battles with hostile forces. But all along, one date, one place and one audience have stood out as clear beacons. Tonight, in Calgary, at the Conservative Party convention, a chance for Stephen Harper to address the issue with friends. So, what did he tell them? Senior correspondent Terry Malewski has the story. The Conservatives are putting the best face they can on a difficult time for the party and its leader. But even with the train wreck in the Senate looming over him, Harper didn't change his script one bit. The Senate should do the right thing now and suspend those senators without pay. Harper never mentioned the fact that the three senators are his appointees. Instead, he painted the opposition as their friends. When we decide that a case based on the facts requires serious sanction, our opponents immediately accuse us of being unfair, nasty and ruthless. And then they portray the offenders as victims or even martyrs. Now friends, friends, what all of this tells us and what it tells me. In terms of such opponents, I couldn't care less what they say. We will do the right thing. They applauded, but observers from the opposition were scathing. Watching that speech, you simply don't get any sense that Mr. Harper understands how deeply felt across the country uh, is the reaction to the Senate scandals. He did not for one second admit any responsibility, even though he hired Wright, he hired Duffy, he hired Wallen. He's changed his story a million times. Tonight, Canadians were looking for something that would show that Stephen Harper recognized that he has made mistakes. But some Tory delegates were also griping about the Senate. Many seem uneasy about the Prime Minister's bid to blame it all on his former Chief of Staff, Nigel Wright. I think that the PM hasn't handled it as well as he should have. I think that crack at uh, Nigel Wright's going to hurt him a lot. I really do. At least two senior ministers are also in Wright's corner. I've known Nigel a long time. He's a, he's a very principled individual. He's somebody who um, is honest. He's worked hard for our party in the past. And uh, you know, that's my opinion. That's my view of Nigel. Of course, it's not just the delegates who are concerned. A new poll for the CBC suggests the scandal is eating away at the Prime Minister's standing. What really jumps is the fact that it looks like now Stephen Harper is being judged by his ability to manage the controversy related to the Senate as opposed to his economic stewardship. It has to be a significant blow considering all the effort that, he has been, that he's put into building his personal brand about being a good economic manager. Which, of course, is what the Prime Minister emphasized in his speech tonight. Jobs, the economy, free trade with Europe. But he didn't say anything in his speech to persuade his critics to drop the scandal in the Senate. Wendy. Thanks so much, Terry. Terry Malewski at the convention in Calgary tonight. Our national affairs editor is also there. Chris Hall joins me now with his thoughts. So, Chris, boy, a big night, lots of build-up for, for this speech from the Prime Minister tonight. What was the strategy? I think the strategy here was to obviously get the, the base to galvanize around the record on the economy, on job creation, on uh, dealing with crime, the kinds of things that separate this party, the Conservatives, from the other two major parties in the House of Commons. So we heard a large part of the speech, right off the top, all about that record, what has been accomplished in the last seven years. But the one issue he knows he had to address as well was the Senate. And there was some interest tonight on that particular score about what he would say. Would he say he was sorry? Would he accept? any part of the responsibility and Wendy tonight it was blame the courts blame liberal senators for holding up and making martyrs out of the other two uh, really it's quite interesting how he framed it there was no admission of any problem here and that's what he was focused on so we can hear it lots of applause from this very friendly crowd and particularly when he did the, the the real hard line again on the Senate tonight but in the hallways we saw a bit in Terry's item you've been talking to some party members before this speech it seems that there are still serious concerns about the government's handling of, of the Senate. 
Yeah, actually, a lot of people came and approached us and raised this question, Wendy. The main focus here is that they want this problem to be dealt with and gone. And failing that, they needed to see some kind of sign that this wouldn't be repeated and that there would be some kind of an acknowledgement from the Prime Minister that he bore some responsibility, or at least his office did. They didn't hear that tonight. They're happy, I think, with what they've heard most of all in terms of the broad sweep of this message, but they're not going to hear what I think they really needed to hear was that this thing will soon be over. And a couple of jabs at the opposition leaders. Well, the uh, Justin Trudeau, he called, what, a, a Canadian idol candidate? Yeah, I, yeah, Wendy, it's more about the man's not experienced enough to be leader of the country, uh, taking issue at his good looks and his light on policy. Uh, almost no mention of Thomas Mulcair, really, which is quite interesting. The Conservatives clearly more concerned about the Liberals under Justin Trudeau than they are at the NDP right at this time. Well, we'll see how it plays outside next. Thanks so much, Chris. Okay, thanks, buddy. Chris Hall in Calgary tonight.